Dave, I've been suffering from horrible squatting due to tight lats. It seems that I'm leaning forward out of the hole besides just a lot of stretching. Is there anything else I can do? Um, I've never seen anybody who has had squatting problems falling forward out of the hole due to tight lats. You know, I, I don't think that's what the issue is. It could be, you know, tightness is in a lot of different areas. It can be weak hamstrings. It can be weak lower back. It can be a weak upper back. So I don't think it's the tight lats. I think you're jumping to assumptions. Um, nine out of 10 times what it is is just shitty technique. So the, what I would recommend that you do is go back to the drawing board and refocus on learning and perfecting perfect technique and go from there. So whatever you're currently training with, I drop the weight by 50%, spend the next three to four weeks just doing the most perfect reps you can possibly do with whatever style of squatting that you're currently doing. If it's a close stance, wide stance, medium stance, I don't know what your current style of squatting is, but go back to the drawing board, perfect that nine out of 10 times, that's gonna correct your problems and your squat will go up amazingly just by getting your technique back under control. Here's another injury one that's talking about pec tears. There are x-rays. Um, there's some swelling, some bruising, and so forth. Da, 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 da. Kind of the same thing that we read all the time. Um, any advice would be appreciated. Yeah, the, the advice that I have, once again, is going to go, I wrote an article on this, go to the site search bar, search pec tears, it should come up one of the top two articles, it'll tell you how I dealt with rehabbing and coming back from multiple pec tears as far as complete total ruptures as well. Uh, this question here. This guy's got a friend. He's this guy's doing mountain dog training. The other guy's doing five three one training. Um, they train together. Um, basically, what should they do? Um, they can't decide. You know which which program. Basically, he's asking me to compare one program to the other. Um, this is fairly simple to do with these programs because one of them is more of a strength program. One of them is more of a hypertrophy bodybuilding type program. Um, I, I personally don't think that you should try to mix and match programs if that's, if that's what you're asking. I think you, just, you decide on one and then you both just go and do it. Um, you can also, I don't know what your training goals are, you can phase it as well. So, you know, do the mountain dog training for 12 weeks and then phase into 531 for 12 weeks, then phase back out. So there's a way that you can, you can basically do both and see how that works for you as well. What I would not do is have one training partner do one program, one training partner do the other program, because then it's just a complete total disaster, and you're running back and forth. It's taking too much time. You're arguing over different principles, and all. it's just it's not worth it. So decide on one, rotate them through if you want, or just stick with it. It's, it's, not, that, it's not that complicated. We'll take one more here. Maybe. Once again, all these injury questions, guys, you should really address to um, Ryan Smith, Mike Robertson, and Tom Diebel. Most of these that I'm skimming through right now, that's exactly what I'm looking at is, you know, a bunch of injury questions that I'm not qualified to answer.
Okay. How do John and I select the training and loading parameters for finisher exercises like the deadlifts or the other big lifts? Is there a set rep progression that's followed? Um, I can't really speak for John. He's, he's the one that does the programming. I do a lot of the, for myself, I do a lot of the modifications to the programming. So he does have set rep parameters that he sets, which is basically based upon volume and how he cycles the volume throughout the whole program. Um, what, I, what I modify if I see those exercises in the program is based upon how hard do I actually want to train and how far do I want to push myself. So if I want to push myself with strip sets or ascending sets or, or whatever it is, then the modifications are going to be made based upon, you know, how many work sets are going to happen before this main set and, and so forth. So typically, if it's, if it's a leg movement and we're training together, we have to agree on, you know, what, what we're going to end up doing, you know, for the last set and how, how, what kind of effect that's going to have on the rest of the training that's got to occur throughout the rest of the day. So we want to train as hard as we possibly can, but there's still got to be something left after we get off the floor to be able to leg press, hack, squat, leg extension, lunges, or whatever else we're going to do. So with, with the big movements like that, while they are programmed for, for me and, and for John, there, there's some modifications that are being made, you know, as we're warming up or as we're moving into the movement. An example would be, a great example would be last week, you know, we were uh, lying leg curls were first, and then from that we were going to move on to yoke bar squats. He's got a show in seven days. My hip's a little banged up. So working up to a heavy set of five, heavy set of six, or a heavy set of eight really wasn't going to be in the cards because it's from a risk-benefit ratio, it's not going to do either one of us any good. So we made a decision that we would work up to um, – We'd use reverse bands and work up to whatever. We, we worked up to a weight that we felt were starting to work, but we're not really working that hard. So for us, it was 455. We figured it was going to happen between four and six plates. Once we found that weight where we were working a little bit, we did 15 sets of five reps back-to-back -back sets. So we try to use you know real short rest periods, basically cluster sets, to be able to you know, drive into the muscle as hard as we possibly can while keeping the loading off John's back, which is a little injured right now, off my hip, and still be able to get an extremely intense workout from that exercise and then move on to everything that we had to do from there. So that I call that, from a training perspective, being audible ready. And I don't care if it's bodybuilding, powerlifting, or what type of training it is that you're doing. That's one of the most important concepts that you can have when it comes to training.